right, here we are. It's Wednesday and I am happy to be back and I'm hoping that many of you will be able to join me today. So I'll just wait a minute. I'll just wait a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yeah, you come into the room, worship. As you enter this virtual space, just let the Holy Spirit rest on you, hover over you. Marvelous things happen when he hovers over us, when he rests on us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we worship you. We worship you. Come on, worship with me. Hallelujah. God, we worship you. We worship you. We welcome your holy presence. We welcome your grace. We welcome the refreshing that comes from you, Lord. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Good afternoon to you, too. Welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the nearness of your spirit. Thank you for the nearness of your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, God. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to encourage you to invite someone to watch with you today. <laughs> All right, good good things should be shared. Good things should be spread abroad, right? Thank you, Lord. So last week, um, let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for um, this moment. Thank you for the spirit moment, the spirit timing. Thank you for what you have prepared for us, what you desire for us to receive, and God, how you want us to draw nearer uh, into deeper levels of intimacy with you. So God, we are open. We are open. We say, take us there. Take us to new levels, new higher dimensions, oh God, in the realms of the spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. May those who come just be open, be hungry, and be ready for more today. Thank you, Jesus. So last week, we started um, this two-part series, which uh, we'll conclude today, on praying in the Spirit. I firmly believe that in life, not just in terms of spiritual, the spiritual aspect of life, but in life in general, the more you have and the more equipped you are, it's the greater ease with which you'll be, do, be able to do what you need to do. For example, Proverbs says, if the ax is sharp, right? You can get more done with a sharpened ax than you can with a dull ask, ax, right? And for those of you who are in the kitchen, you can get more done with your sharp knife than if the knife is dull. And we understand that God starts our reunion with him, our fellowship with him, our relationship with him through the blood of his son, Jesus, at the cross. So we can't go anywhere except we begin at the beginning, which is at the cross, at the place of surrendering our hearts, our whole minds, our whole beings, all of us to the Lord and asking him to be Lord and Savior. God bless you. Thanks for coming. Please invite someone to today's broadcast. We are building on last week, and so we are glad that you are here. But beyond conversion, beyond salvation, there is so much more. And unfortunately, some people, all they know is at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And that is the initiation into the kingdom. 
That was your initiation into the kingdom of God. But now that you are part of the kingdom, God expects you, God expects me to now manifest his kingdom. So when we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're saying, God, your reign, your rule, your authority, let it be manifested in me. And I believe, honestly, in our prayer lives, we need to see the kingdom of God manifested. And I believe praying in the spirit, which is last week we understand is not just praying in tongues, but it's also praying in tongues. Praying in the spirit is being led by the spirit. It's attending to the voice of God. It's listening intently to God's heart and voice before you begin to pray, before you begin to rattle off your list of prayer requests. It's allowing God to impress in you and on you what's on his heart. That's praying being led by the Spirit. It's praying empowered by the Spirit where the Spirit of God energizes you and empowers you. How, how many of you know what I'm talking about? You are praying and all of a sudden it's like a gear sh got shifted inside of you. I know what I'm talking about. You're praying and you know, yeah, you're talking to the Lord. Yes, you're expressing your heart to the Lord. But something comes over you and all of a sudden you know you have shifted in your prayer and you're now praying empowered and energized by the spirit we've got to ask god for that sudden shift sis that's right and then we want to pray in the realms of the spirit we want to pray not because we know but because there's a word of knowledge there's a there's revelation that's coming to us via the spirit and we're able to see things, hear things, feel things, sense things, and we're able to pray in accordance to what is being revealed. And then we said there is praying in tongues. And it's not a language you learn anywhere, but it is a language given by the Spirit of God. And so today we want to go a little deeper in praying in tongues. So we understand, and I want to emphasize and re-emphasize that praying in the Spirit is not only praying in tongues. It's being Spirit-led, Spirit-guided, Spirit-empowered, Spirit-energized, right? Flowing, not just because you can call words, not just because you're familiar with how to pray, not because, you know, just praying because Holy Spirit has now taken over your mind, taken over your, 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 your tongue, and is praying through you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. And, you know, I want to I wanna say something here, because I, I, I've been, like I said, around long enough. <laughs> I have been walking with the Lord for almost 45 years. Thank you, Jesus. One of the things I desired when I got saved, I said, Lord, I want to live more of my life for you than I've lived in the world. And I'm so grateful to be almost twice beyond that. And I have been in the Pentecostal flow and stream for 40, 42 of those years. And I have seen all forms and shapes of people speaking in tongues where it seemed like they think I can't control this and I would have this outburst in the middle of, you know, maybe, you know, a time when it ought not to have happened and you have to say, no, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. You, you can allow your spirit to be in submission so that you are not out of order. I've been in those services where people were out of order and they are hindering what God wanted to do in that moment. They were calling attention to themselves versus directing attention to the Lord. That's how you differentiate. Is it bringing us closer to God? Is this allowing us to see God or we are seeing you? And so we want to be careful in what we sometimes call, you know, uh, filled with the Spirit or the Holy Spirit moving on us, where it's a distraction from what God wants 
to do. However, you and I need to know that being filled with the Spirit is likened to being drunk. Being filled with the Spirit is likened to being drunk. So that also means not me trying to harness and control what is happening. It needs to be orderly, but it doesn't need to be we are grieving and controlling the Holy Spirit. Because Paul says in Ephesians 5 and 18, don't drink too much wine for many evils lie along that path. He says, be filled instead with the Holy Spirit and controlled by him. You want to be intoxicated with the Spirit of God. You want to be consumed by the Spirit of God. You want to be a person who is so spiritual that you are honestly really trying to live the life out in the natural way. You want to be so walking in the realms of the Spirit. You want to live in the supernatural zone and you want that to be how you live life normally. Your, our normalcy as believers should be that we are living supernatural and we are really working hard at trying to live out this natural life instead of the opposite where we are so natural in our thinking, in our operation, in our beings and how we do life that sometimes it's really hard to live the supernatural life. I believe praying in tongues is one of the ways to, to live and abide in the realms of the spirit. Hallelujah. So today we want to dive in a little bit more. I call your friend because listen, we, talk, we want more horsepower. We want greater horsepower. We want greater acceleration, greater empowerment, greater performance. We want to be able to tap into the realms of the spirit. And I believe you and I can do so as we allow this gift to be ours. So, I'm going to pray for you at the end if you've never uh, experienced the baptism, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for you before we get offline today. So come on into the room, stay into the room. And for those of you who have been filled and you know you experienced the baptism and the infilling with the evidence of speaking in tongues, but it's been a long time, right? Like you heard my testimony last week. Last week. It's been a long time. I'm going to pray for you too, for a reactivation and for you to be revived in praying in your heavenly language. This is not supposed to be something we do occasionally, periodically. You and I are supposed to be praying daily, daily. Paul says, I pray in tongues more than all of you. You and I are supposed to be praying daily in our heavenly language. Once the gift has been given, and it's a gift. Remember, it's a gift. You don't buy a gift. You don't pay for a gift. It is on the part of the giver who chooses to give you this gift. And so the Heavenly Father has chosen to give us the gift of His Holy Spirit. Oh, somebody say it's a gift. It's a gift. I just need to be open and to receive. So today, our emphasis is on praying in tongues. We want to differentiate, right? Praying in tongues, your personal heavenly language where you and God communicate directly, right? You communicate di directly from your spirit to the spirit of God and the gift of tongues. I said that last week. So 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 11, you need to know that there are, there are nine gifts listed in 1 Corinthians 12. And among the nine gifts is the gift of tongues speaking in an unknown tongue. That gift is not for the individual believer. That gift is for the body. So when someone has that gift, they speak in an unknown tongue and there's always and must always be interpretation when it's the gift that is in operation. So when the gift is in operation, we should all be listening in a corporate setting for what is the Lord saying? Who has the interpretation? Who has the understanding of what was just spoken? If there is no interpretation, if there is no understanding, the Bible says we shouldn't speak in tongues. I want you to make sure you understand that. However, 
This is not praying in tongues. When we pray in tongues, I believe all of us, all of us in a corporate gathering can be praying simultaneously in our heavenly language. We can be lifting our voices in one accord. No one person dominating, no one person overpowering, but we are all praying together, hallelujah, from our spirits unto the Lord. That is different to one person, one individual praying out loud, overpowering everyone else, and there is no interpretation. I hope we are understanding that. You want to understand that this is an ability to pray directly to the Lord. Your spirit is going straight to him. And I was thinking about how customer service can be so annoying sometimes. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? You call a customer service line and it says, <laughs> press number one for so and so. And then you get there and then it says, press so and so. And it's like, wait a minute. And it's like you're having to go through all the loops or hoops, I don't know, <laughs> before you can get to speak to somebody. And sometimes you get there and it is, you still don't get to speak to anybody. I believe tongues, praying in tongues is just a direct line, no interference. First of all, the devil doesn't understand what you're saying. Hallelujah. You need to understand. The devil doesn't understand what you're saying. And so when you pray in English, he can intercept what you're saying. He can, he can distort what you're saying. He can block what you're saying. But when you go in the realms of the spirit and you allow the, the prayer, a language God gave to you as a gift to be what you express from your spirit to the Lord, the devil doesn't know what you're saying. So guess what? You want to pray in tongues more than you pray in English. Are you hearing me? You want to pray so you bypass all kinds of other things that would want to intercept and interfere with your prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we want to understand some things here today. That number one, praying in tongues. Number one, praying in tongues is the evidence of you being baptized, immersed, or you've had the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Clarify here again, every believer has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You're saved. I don't care if you're Baptist. I don't care if you're Methodist. I don't care you, what church, what denomination, what you subscribe to. You, you accepted Christ as Savior and Lord. The Holy Spirit came and took up residency within you. So there's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and every believer is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. That's how you know you're saved. Romans says, it is the Spirit that bears witness with our spirit that we are born again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I knew the moment I made my profession and confession in Christ that I was saved. I got up from my knees and I knew I was born again. Hallelujah. So that happened long before I got the infilling, not the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So there's the indwelling and there's the infilling or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we have too many uh, uh, evidence, right? Um, and uh, so much evidence in scripture of when someone or when a group of people were filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke in another tongue. Acts is the classic example. Acts 2 and 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. In Acts chapter 10, when Peter was sent to Cornelius, his house, the Gentiles, they, the Jews, Peter and the others were amazed because the Holy Spirit came upon Cornelius and his household, and how they knew? They spoke in tongues. When Paul, um, in Acts 19, said to the believers, have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? They said, we, we don't even know about the Holy Spirit. We haven't heard. He says, what baptism have you been baptized with? They said, the baptism of John. The Bible says Paul laid hands on them, and prayed that they would receive the Holy Spirit, and they spoke 
in uh, other tongues. So there's evidence over and over that tells us that being filled with the Holy Spirit, being baptized with the Holy Spirit, you would know by the evidence of speaking in an unknown language. And at Mark 16 and 17, when Jesus was getting ready to leave, he said to, he gathered his disciples around him and he said, I'm going, but I want you to know what I, what I've done, you are going to do greater. You're going to do more because you're going to have more time on earth than I have had. Jesus had only three years of ministry. He lived 33 years on the earth, but he never entered public ministry until he was 30. So three years. And he says, you're going to have more than three years and you're going to be able to do much more than I do. And he says, these are the signs that are going to follow you because you believe. These are the, 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 the signs that are going to be uh, the mark or the markers of you being a follower of Christ, a believer in Christ. This is the word of God. This is not some doctrine of one particular denomination. Mark 16 and 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Somebody say, I am a believer. And therefore, these signs shall follow me. What, what are those signs? One of them is, they shall cast out devils. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. But in that same verse, it says, they shall speak with new tongues. Hello, somebody. Why is it that we would want to make this some denominational thing or, you know, it's for some special group or for some special people? No, if you're a believer, then the indwelling or the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, that's a gift from the Father, and it's yours. Peter said in Acts 2, it's not just for us. It's for us, it's for our children, and for as many as the Lord our God shall call. Say, I am called. I am among the many that he wants to pour out. Joel in chapter 2 says, and God will pour out his spirit on the last days, and our our, our uh, sons and our daughters shall prophesy. They shall speak in new tongues. They shall see dreams and visions. There's going to be an outpouring. And I want you to not let your denomination or your organization or whatever teaching you have sat under to prevent you from being a part of what God is doing in the earth. I am one who is saying, God, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. I want to be in the, in the flow. I want to be in sync with what God is doing. And I want us to know that we know in part and we prophesy in part. And when you have gotten a measure of revelation, you need to know you don't know it all. And so you say, God, whatever revelation I got 10, 15, 20 years ago, Lord, would you increase my understanding? Right? Would you cause me to grow in my understanding of the, the, the true things that you want your people, your bride, your church to walk in? Hallelujah. So the spirit, uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit the, uh, is, is known by the evidence of speaking in tongues. When we pray in tongues, you want to know this, man. You are edifying I call it going to the spiritual gym. 1 Corinthians 14 and 2, when someone speaks in tongues, no one understands a word he says or she says because he's not speaking to people. When I pray in tongues, I'm not praying for somebody else. I'm not praying to anyone, but you're praying directly to God and you're speaking intimate, hear this, intimate mysteries in the spirit. Wow, this is deep level intimacy where your spirit and God's spirit, you know, are, are in communion and in communication. You want that. You want that, especially in the times we live in, because the spirit of God is going to help you to be 
building up your spirit, to be edifying your spirit, to, to fortify your spirit. Come on. Have you been having things just coming at you from every which way? How do you stand and how do you withstand except you are going to a higher level and a new dimension? Come on, somebody. Pray in the spirit. Pray in tongues so you can edify your spirit. Verse 14 of 1 Corinthians 14 says, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayed, but my understanding is unfruitful. So my mind does not comprehend what my spirit is saying, huh? but my spirit is praying to the Lord. So you who are logical and analytical and rational and everything needs to make sense or you're not going to do it, you're going to be messed up because you started the journey in faith anyway. You accepted Christ by faith and you believe by faith that his, his death, his burial, his resurrection and can now redeem you and sanctify you and justify you. Beloved, it's the same faith that you must now exercise and believe that God, as you yield your members to him, as you yield your tongue to him, can light upon your tongue, hallelujah, with holy fire and baptize you. And so you now pray and speak in a language that brings you into greater levels of intimacy with God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So it is the evidence that you are filled, praying in tongues. Praying in tongues is, an, uh, is, 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 is the ability to edify your spirit, build up your spirit. It's lifting weight. I call it in the spirit, man. Hallelujah. Where your, the muscles of your spirit are getting stronger as you learn. You see why you want to pray in the spirit? Because things are bombarding us every day, man. Our minds, our bodies, our souls, my gosh. I mean, but if we pray in the spirit, Man, you're going to live above. You're going to be that eagle that is soaring above the, the stuff, the noise, ooh, the frenzy. Come on, somebody. Go higher. Go higher. Pray in the spirit. Number three, pray in the spirit because it energizes. It not only edifies your spirit, but it energizes your spirit. My God. Remember we were talking about horsepower last week? You want to have acceleration. You want to have the highest performance possible. And one of the ways to get that is to pray in the spirit, to pray in tongues. Jude 20 says, but you beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to build myself up. I want to be energized. I want to be fortified. I want to have acceleration. Hallelujah. And therefore, I will pray in the Spirit. I will pray specifically in tongues. Praying in tongues is also a way that God explains or reveals the mysteries of his kingdom to us. When you pray in tongues, you are accessing mysteries in the spirit. Hallelujah. When you pray in tongues, you are gaining access to revelation. When you pray in tongues, you are decoding and deciphering mysteries that the natural mind may not ever get, but your spirit will capture from the Lord the things he wants you to understand. John 16 and 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. The Holy Spirit represents God the Father. The Holy Spirit represents God the Son. He speaks on their behalf. And so if you want to know what's the will of God, what's the mind of Christ, Lord Jesus, what step should I take? What move should I make? Learn how to pray in tongues until God allows your spirit to capture what is in the mind of God. Oh, hallelujah. You and I don't need to do what 
we have always done. We don't need to just be who we have always been. We don't need to be, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, routine and uh, uh, religious, I want to say, and, and, and monotonous in our relationship with God. There can be fresh fire. There can be fresh, fresh refreshment. Hallelujah. Refreshing can come to you um, as you pray in the spirit. Sometimes you need to know that physically, you're just tired, man. Mentally, you're just drained. But your spirit, come on, if you let your spirit lead, if you let your spirit overrule your body and your mind and your emotions, you can pray in the spirit and you could be tired like what? You could pray in the spirit because remember, your spirit is the only part of you that really directly, directly communicates with God. John 4 and 24, they that worship me must worship me in spirit, in spirit and in truth. It is your spirit that came alive when you gave your heart to the Lord. It is your spirit that got born again. It is your spirit that got converted. Come on. It is your spirit that is now alive to God. And so you want to allow your spirit to stay on top. You want to allow your spirit to stay energized, to stay empowered, to stay strong. One way to keep your spirit strong and energized and empowered is to pray in tongues. Hallelujah. Pray in tongues because it's going to empower your mind, Lord Jesus. So whereas your mind may not understand and will not understand, I believe that you as a believer, as you grow in praying in your heavenly language. This is not in the corporate body. This is you and God. God can let you understand what you are saying. Whew. Think about it. You have, a, you have a great burden and a great need to bring before the Lord. You don't know what to do. You, you have no idea. It, it is too big for you. And you begin to say, Lord, help me. Help me, Holy Ghost. Pray through me, Holy Spirit. And as you pray, empowered, energized, come on, by the Holy Spirit, he begins to cause your mind to understand what needs to happen. You're, you're, you begin to get a, an impression. You begin to have a visual sense of do this, do that. You're praying, and I mean, I, oftentimes I'm praying for someone, and if I'm praying and I'm leaning into the Holy Spirit, I will hear things, or I will see things, or I will have this strong impression, and I would say, say what I'm hearing, say what I'm sensing, and, and check in with the individual. Is this making sense? Uh, is this correct? Because I'm not going to assume that I got it right. I'm not going to assume and it's okay to be wrong. Come on, somebody. So if you want to grow in the things of the Lord, be okay to not have it right. I have had people say, mm, that what you just told me, I don't know. And I just released that because I said what I felt impressed to say in my spirit. And if it didn't agree with you, if you didn't connect, if it doesn't resonate, like it's okay. The Spirit of God dwells in you. I trust the Holy Ghost in you. I trust that you are not just dismissive. And I have to grow in becoming more confident that God does speak to me. And sometimes what I think is God is not necessarily God. That's okay. Sometimes we feel like, oh my gosh, I have to get it right all the time. Oh, I must not be for real. Remember when uh, the widow who... who the woman, sorry, not the widow, the woman whose son died and she ran to the man of God. She sent the servant ahead of first and then she came behind. She fell at Elijah's feet and Elijah's servant said, you know what? You should let her get away from you. She shouldn't be touching you up and holding you up like that. And this is what the man of God said. And it brought great consolation to my heart. The man of God says, leave her alone. She's a woman in great distress, but the Lord hasn't told me. Woo. Come on, somebody just needs to take the pressure off. You, you're not going to know all things. You're not God. You're not Jehovah. <laughs> you're not going you're not going to get even though you're prophetic even though you're apostolic even though you're deep in the things of the spirit you're not going to know it all and this is where humility comes in because you're going to have to say I, I don't fully get what I'm hearing I don't fully understand what I'm seeing I'm going to tell you and you could let me know if I am on track I am telling you 
that if we do that, we would grow. We would grow. Don't be afraid to not have it right. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. People who don't make mistakes are people who don't grow and people who stay in the boat and they criticize who step out of the boat. Go ahead, Peters. All the Peters come out of the boat. If you hear the voice of God, step out of the boat. That's the only way you're going to walk on water. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Uh, we read that before, verse 15, 14 and 15, Paul says, I'm going to pray in the spirit. I'm going to pray with understanding. So just see, just see him going back and forth. One minute he's praying in tongues, a minute he's praying in the language that he was, you know, born, born growing, uh, learning from his parents and his upbringing. So pray in your known tongue, your known language. Pray in your native language, I want to say, but also pray in in the spirit. In other words, when you pray in your native language, you're praying with understanding. Your mind can understand and others around you can understand. When you pray in the spirit, your mind is unfruitful. However, your spirit is speaking mysteries to God and you, my beloved, you are being edified. You are being strengthened. Romans 8 and 27, the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So that's another thing. When we pray in the Spirit, we pray the will of God. <laughs> I have to admit, oftentimes a situation, I don't know what to pray. I don't know what, how should I pray God? And yeah, it's easier to say, you know, add the tagline, God, um, um, if it be your will, if it be your will. And that's good. Nevertheless, thy will be done. Nevertheless, God, your purpose prevails. And so we want to submit our, all our prayers to the Lord. But when we pray in tongues and, and the Spirit is praying through us, we don't have to worry about that. Because first of all, I'm not praying from my mind. I'm not praying from my understanding. I am praying from my spirit. And I'm allowing my spirit, hallelujah, to, to pray back to God, the will of God, the purpose of God, the mind of God. And yes, I don't understand what I'm saying, but I'm trusting that as I yield my members and as I yield myself, the Holy Spirit is praying in me, praying through me, and God's will is being spoken. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to pray for us. I want to pray for you who have never experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Remember, it is a gift. Acts 1.8, Jesus said to his disciples, I want you to stay in Jerusalem. I want you to wait for the gift, the promise of the Father. This promise is the Holy Spirit. And when he comes, you will be empowered. Ooh, Jesus. And you need to know, when you gave your life to Jesus, in simple faith, you said, Lord, I am a sinner. I acknowledge I have wandered far from your glory and your, 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 your heart. I have done that which hurts you. I come in true repentance asking for forgiveness of every sin I've ever committed. I receive the blood of Jesus over my life. I receive cleansing now and I receive my heart being made new. And so you come alive immediately in sincerity to that faith-filled prayer and confession. You got saved. Beloved, in simple faith, you say, Lord, I thank you that the gift of the Holy Spirit is a promise for all believers. Maybe I have been taught one thing. Maybe I have been in a context where that was scorned upon and ridiculed and criticized. And maybe because of the abuse and the misuse, we have thrown out the baby with the bath water. But Lord, I'm listening to your servant and I'm hearing this teaching. And so right now, I even ask for forgiveness for the times when maybe I, in ignorance, grieved your Holy Spirit offended your Holy Spirit. But Lord, I am hungry for more. I want to have full horsepower in the spirit realm, in the things of the spirit. I want to be have the highest performance in my walk with you. I want to be energized. I want to be empowered. I want to be equipped, oh God.
I want to understand the mysteries of the realms of the spirit. I want to be able to pray your will. I want to be able to have this intimate, direct uh, flow with, the, with, with you, O oh Father. And so I, right now, ah, open my heart and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the baptism, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. The next thing you do, beloved, having prayed that simple prayer and receiving that gift, you do what they did in Acts chapter 2. The Bible says, hear me, I need to read it. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 2, the Bible says they spoke in tongues. Trying to find the scripture. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. So I tell people, when I'm praying for you to receive the Holy Spirit, when I'm leading and guiding you into praying in this language you didn't learn anywhere, but the Holy Spirit would give it to you, you got to yield your tongue. They spoke, which means you agree with God and you collaborate with God and you submit your instrument of speech. You submit your instrument of speech to God. You submit your instrument of speech to the Holy Spirit. So your mouth cannot be closed. Your lips cannot be sealed. So having simply said, Lord, I receive in faith the gift of the Holy Spirit, you now yield your tongue and you allow the flow. The, Jesus said in uh, John 7, out of your belly will flow. Out of your inner being, out of your inner core, out of your spirit man will flow rivers of living water. I personally, from my own experience, and I believe this, that you would have a sense that there's something moving on the inside of you. Hallelujah. There's like a bubbling brook inside of your inner core, and it's rising. Ooh, it's rising. So you've prayed the prayer, you're yielding your tongue, and now you sense what is rising, and you give way. You yield to what you are receiving. Don't try to understand it. Don't try to let your mind block it. Don't, don't, don't try to control. Yield, yield. And I believe as you just yield, Holy Spirit will begin to flow through you and you find yourself praying. As you begin, it may just be a syllable. It may just be one thing you say over and over repetitively. That's where I began. And many will say, that was me too. I said the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. I don't remember what that was. This is some 40 some years ago. But I promise you that now, because I practice praying in tongues daily, regularly, I become more convinced that I am not just going to say one syllable over and over. No. Come on. If you're saying one syllable over and over, say, Lord, I need a refresher. I need a refreshing. I need a fresh infilling. I need a fresh immersion. I need a fresh baptism. Because here's what. Many persons who have been baptized in the Holy Spirit and who speak in tongues, the truth be told, after a while, you ain't praying in the Spirit. You're just praying what your mind remembers. You're just praying what is in your memory. You're just praying what is in your memory. And so I want to distinguish that as well. Because if you keep saying the same thing over and over again, something is not happening from deep within. Something is not being poured out in you and poured out from you. Because you are supposed to be going from glory to glory. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, I pray even now for those who need a refresher, who needs a refreshing you know, sometimes you have to touch the refresher on your computer, on your, your device, because it's not, it's just slow, man. It's not, it's not, it's not happening. 
Sometimes you gotta shut down and touch the refresh and reboot button. Some of us need rebooting. Some of us need refreshing. Somebody say, Lord, that's me. Refresh me, revive me, and cause me to come alive and come anew to the things of the Spirit. I have been in one gear many years now. I have not shifted. I have not allowed your spirit to be poured out upon me. I am saying things because I remember them. I am praying in tongues, all right, but it's not energized and empowered by the spirit of God. I'm telling you, say, Holy Spirit, deliver me. I want the refreshing. I want the refresher. I want the fresh baptism. Hallelujah. I want fresh glory and fresh fire. Is anybody agreeing with me? Touch the heart, touch the thumb. Let me know you are receiving that. So let me pray for you who have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then I'm going to pray for all of us. And I just may pray in tongues today. Listen, because if I'm preaching, if I'm teaching it, I need to demonstrate what I'm teaching. Come on, somebody. I don't want to offend anybody, so you need to just go ahead and skip and run if that's you don't want to hear. But listen, if you're hungry and if you want to have all that God says you can have, if you want to have access to all that God says you can have access to, if you want to do what God has called you to do with greater grace, greater anointing, greater courage, greater boldness, Peter who denied Jesus, Peter, who denied Jesus, I don't know the man. He cussed. He cursed. But on the day of Pentecost, hallelujah, having received power from on high, the same Peter got up and preached 3,000 got saved. Man, 51 days before, he couldn't say, I am a disciple of Jesus. 51 days later, he was able to preach. Next day, he gets into the temple and he sees the man. He says, hey, silver and gold I don't have, but I've got some power that I want to transmit and transfer and impart to you. Oh, my God. What if we walked in the Spirit? What if we were empowered by the Spirit? We would go into Walmart and Holy Spirit would lead us to pray for somebody and they would be healed. My God. God would give us the grace to, to call people and, and pray over them and say, I was in prayer and the Holy Spirit gave me these words for you. And they'll say, oh my God, how did you know? The Spirit led me. The Spirit guided me. How many of you want to walk in more? More. Somebody say more. Hallelujah. All right. So you who have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, say, Laura, I received you by faith and I accepted you as my Lord and Savior because I believed your word, and I confessed your word. And I believe your word. I believe all of your word. And I believe that the gift of the Holy Spirit is mine. It's part of my inheritance. Hallelujah. And so now in faith, I open my heart to you and I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I yield my tongue to you. And Lord, I will speak as you give me the ability to. I will speak as you give me the empowerment to. In Jesus' name, amen. Speak it. Come on, right there, wherever you are, just speak what is rising from within you. Just yield your tongue. Just pray. Just pray. Pray what Holy Spirit gives to you. Come on, you who have received, but it's been a while, or you don't really understand that you should be praying daily, come on, pray not just because you have a, mm, an unction, pray not because you feel the special touch, pray because it is a privilege and an honor to have this intimate language where you can talk directly to God, where you speak mysteries, where you, where you communicate and your spirit is edified and energized. Come on. I pray right now for the refreshing of the Holy Spirit to be upon you. I pray a fresh release of fire upon you. Come on. Come on. You can do it right in your room. Come on. Come on. Ignore everything else. Don't be afraid to let loose if you can. Come on. Don't be afraid to lift your voice. Hallelujah. Come on. Pray. Lord Jesus, I want to new level. I want a new dimension. I want fresh glory, God, right now to come upon me, Lord Jesus. I want to be able to walk in the realms of the Spirit like never before. 
I want to be able to see and hear and discern your heart, your voice, your will like never before. Come on, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. It's yours. This gift is yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't grieve him. We've grieved him long enough. We shut him up, shut him out of our lives. We've stifled his flow long enough. We've prevented him from doing what he wants to do in our churches long enough because we need to be politically correct. God is a God of order, but sometimes we are so fixated on controlling the environment. Wow, that Holy Spirit doesn't get to flow and move among us. Father, forgive us. Deliver us, Lord. Help us to know that if we yield to you, there's so much more that you want to bring to us. I want to pray and release us to keep praying. <laughs> I want to pray and release us to keep flowing. And by the way, I want to invite you, if you're not aware, I host a time of prayer every Wednesday morning. Every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, inbox me if you would like to be part of that prayer altar. We literally call it SVM. Somebody coined it SVM Fireplace, right? Because honestly, it's a place where there's a flow. It's a place where it's, it's, it's fresh glory. It, it is, you never know what's going to happen. So if you're hungry for more and you're perhaps not in an environment where that is um, encouraged and, and you want to learn, join us, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, every Wednesday. Inbox me for the Zoom information. Father, I thank you. Hallelujah. I thank you that your word is life. Your word is light. Hallelujah. And I thank you even now that there's an impartation. I sense that there's an impartation. Hallelujah. All you need to do is show up, show up in the right environment. You show up in the right space. And once you are in that space, my God, there's an impartation. There's an impartation. Father, I thank you that there's an impartation happening right now. That someone is being reactivated to flow in their prayer language. Somebody is being reactivated to pray in tongues. Somebody is receiving that refreshing that they're hungry for. I see someone literally, your hands are up, tears are coming down. Your, scream, your, your tears are streaming down your face and you're crying out to God. Father, I thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you for the, the fresh baptism. Thank you for the fresh infilling, God. Thank you for the refilling, God. Thank you for fresh fire. Hallelujah. Somebody, your prayer life, my God, your prayer life is going to go to a new dimension as you practice praying in tongues. You've been doing the same thing over over, monotonous. But God is saying, I'm shifting you from the mundane. I'm shifting you from what's religious. I'm shifting you from what is, what is, is even rigid, ha, huh? and it's not even full of life. My God, I hear the Holy Spirit say, now I am immersing you. Ooh, God is immersing you. Mm -hmm. Just like you were baptized in water, God is saying, I am immersing you, my God. Even now, as you receive the immersion, the Lord is causing your mind, your mind that has been so bombarded with issues, with concerns, my God. I see the Lord delivering someone from the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear is being broken off of you. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. The spirit of fear that has prevented you from boldly, from boldly doing those things that you know in your heart you should do. Right now, receive, receive the deliverance. The chains are falling. The chains are falling. The chains are being broken in the name of Jesus. Oh, I hear the chains falling. 
Oh, deliverance is coming to your house right now. Deliverance is coming to your heart right now. Oh, spirit of the living God, where you have been injured, where your heart has been wounded. Oh, rabakurubo soto rabakilo bo shanda lende kurubo seke rabaka. I see the spirit of God healing, healing, pouring in oil, pouring in wine. Oh God, yes. Some of you need a baptism in joy, a baptism in joy. Hallelujah. Think it not strange that you would begin to laugh. Mm. That you'd begin to laugh as you're filled with the Spirit of God. You'd begin to laugh. He's going to give you joy, fresh joy, fresh joy. Mm. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Say, Lord, baptize me in joy. Baptize me in joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Beloved, lift your voice. Lift your heart and just pray. Pray in the spirit, pray in tongues, pray in your heavenly language. Build yourself up in your most holy faith. Grow in the things of the spirit for the days we're in are evil and we need more than we had yesterday. Oh, we need more than we had last year, last month. Oh, spirit of God. Father, I thank you right now that you are going to allow this teaching to come into the hands of those who've been crying, who've been hungry, who've been thirsty, who've been yearning, who've been longing. And God, as they humble themselves at your feet, as they repent and make you Lord, as they allow you to rule and reign in all areas of their lives, God, you will allow the gift of the Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues to be their portion. Beloved, I bless you to flow, to walk in greater grace. And until next time, God bless you. Oh, remember, I like the broadcast. If you haven't liked Sanja Valentine Ministries page, please do so. Go over to my YouTube channel, Sandra Valentine Ministries YouTube channel. Like, subscribe rather, touch the bell because I upload my videos there and you can share them on WhatsApp. Share them, share them, share them, share the past. And if you did, if you missed last week, please listen to part one last week, Praying in the Spirit, and then this one. God bless you. Thanks for being here.